Hello. Well, here we are. We're going to talk about chemical reactions. And I'm going to show you a simple chemical reaction. I'm going to take some isopropyl alcohol, which is rubbing alcohol, and we're going to do a combustion reaction. And uh, the combustion reaction involves us burning this um, kind of windy, so I'm having a little bit of trouble here with it, but here we are. I'm getting some heat from it, and I can warm up my hands in this cold Florida winter. Yeah. Well, hello, everyone. Now that you know how to write formulas for compounds, now we're ready to write chemical equations. So here we go. There are a couple of things that we need to review. Quickly, let's review the clues that a chemical reaction has taken place. If there's a color change, a solid forms, which remember, it's called a precipitate. Bubbles form. That means there's a gas being produced. A flame occurs. Heat is produced or absorbed. All of these are signs of chemical reactions. When a chemical reaction occurs, the atoms are rearranged. Either they lose electrons, there's a loss of electrons, gain of electrons, but somehow those atoms are rearranged to form something new, a new product. So we represent these chemical reactions with a chemical equation. A chemical equation is composed of reactants and products. Reactants are those things that you start with, and the products are the new substances that are formed in the chemical reaction. Among the things that we have to review are the presence of or the existence of diatomic elements. Please recall that there are seven of them. These elements are never found uncombined. They are either found with some other element or they are found with another atom just like it. We would never find just O. We would find O2. We would never find hydrogen floating off on its own by itself. We would find H2. We would never find just Cl, but we would find Cl2. They could be combined with another element, but these are the seven elements. Nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and hydrogen. They are always found in pairs. So never write just O always write O2. Never write H, but always H2, and never Cl by itself, but Cl2. However, they can be found with another atom. One of the other things that we must remember is the diatomic elements. Remember that they form a big seven, and we, I call this the big seven, and remember, hydrogen is part of that big seven. Recall also that they are never found uncombined. In other words, you would never find just an O floating around, but it's always O2. Or you would never find bromine just floating around by itself, but it's always Br2. It's either combined with another atom like it, or it's combined with another, a different atom. Chlorine is Cl2. In order to remember what they are, you might remember Mr. Brinkelhoff. Bromine, iodine, nitrogen,
flooring. Hydrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. Mr. Rinkelhoff. When you write a chemical equation, next to the name or the, the symbol or formula of the compound, you may also indicate what state is in. If it is a gas, we show a G. If it is a liquid, if it is in the liquid phase, we show an L. If it is in the gas phase, we show or write a G. And if it is dissolved in water, in other words, in solution, we write AQ, aqueous, which comes from water, Latin word for water. There are two types of equations, a word equation and a chemical equation. The word equation is a chemical equation written in words. While the chemical equation involves write, writing the compounds, the formula of the compounds, as well as the state, with an arrow showing separating the reactants from the products. The rules for writing equations from word equations are very simple. Read the description carefully. Determine which ones are the reactants and the products. Make sure that you write an arrow separating the reactants and products. Write the formulas correctly. And then, finally, don't forget to write the state. What state is in? Is it a gas? Is it in a liquid form? Is it a solid? Or is it dissolved in water? As the short video clip inv indicated, there are many types of chemical reactions. What we must learn to do is to write the chemical equation from a given word equation. On this slide, you will see that there is a word equation given. This is for the reaction of the burning that I just did on my driveway. I took rubbing alcohol, which is isopropyl alcohol, and oxygen, and it says yields, in other words, this means produces carbon dioxide and water. Isopropyl alcohol, at this point, I don't expect you to be able to, name, to write the formula for that, but I will give it to you. And sometimes these will be given to you. For example, isopropyl alcohol is C3H7OH. You haven't learned to write formulas for alcohols, so this would be given to you. However, the next part you would know how to do. It says isopropyl alcohol and oxygen, so in other words, plus oxygen. We would never write just O because remember that oxygen is diatomic. So we would write O2. Yields is represented by an arrow, meaning these are the reactants. Isopropyl, isopropyl alcohol and oxygen are the reactants and the products are carbon dioxide, which you know how to write, a molecular compound, carbon dioxide plus water, H2O. 
here we have successfully written the chemical equation given the word equation for the burning of isopropyl alcohol. In the next RASCAS, you will learn how to balance these equations. That's an, in, that's an important part of writing chemical equations. See you next time. Actually, I'll see you tomorrow in class. Bye-bye. All right, and here's another chemical reaction. What just happened in uh, the motor of the car. We are utilizing fuel to conduct this chemical reaction so the car starts moving. See you later.